Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being here. Uh, we have several announcements um, that we should be making. Um, uh, first of all, a joyful sharing. Barbara Ballou will be here, and um, we are, I don't know if we've ever gotten presents for this many children at Christmas time, but we're doing, um, at the moment, the number is 85. 85 kids and youth. So um, anybody would like to help, I think Barbara will be here at a table out in the hall afterward and we'll be uh, glad to help you if you'd like to help a child. Um, on, the, on the same kind of message, only a more direct uh, appeal here, you might remember <clears throat> that several months ago we had some announcements. We were trying to raise $2,500 to get a lady that lives in her car a new, better functioning vehicle. Um, that didn't work out, but we did collect $45. So we were only, um, my math is not great, but 200 and, uh, 2,400 and something dollars short. But anyway, uh, she does have to now get her heating system fixed. Now the Church Helping Hand Fund has already helped her this year, so we can't get any money out of that, but we need $494. So we already have 45, so we're down to 450. So if anyone, um, our family gives her $30 every week uh, just to help get her through, but if anybody would like to help um, get this lady's heating system fixed so she can get the car inspected and make it uh, stay warm during the winter. Um, and there have been many efforts to get her to get some more permanent, better housing, but unfortunately she is not um, open to that at the moment, but we don't want her to freeze to death. So if anybody wants to help, if you want to put a check in, make the check out to the church, make sure you put um, a car lady or, or something on it, um, on the memo line, and we will do the best we can. Uh, other announcements, you see that um, uh, the, the study on uh, Joseph is starting off. Now it's got off to a little shaky start. There's a beautiful, uh, Lori's put a beautiful manger scene out here on the table, uh, but Joseph is missing. <laughs> so it is important that, uh, uh, that we uh, do what we can. So if you want to study about Joseph, and maybe that group can figure out by the end of Advent where, where he went, um, that would be helpful. So that's coming up. And the first class is Thursday, uh, and the first class will be at the library, right? Yeah. Right, at the library. So the cookie walk's coming up, the cantata's coming up, at, Christmas Eve services, as usual, 7 and 11. However, I will, will announce, um, this will annoy my wife, but I'll say it anyway, um, uh, that there's no service on Christmas Day because it's a religious holiday. <laughs> but it's also a Sunday. But uh, since we'll be here after midnight, I figured that would be uh, okay. All right, now are there are other people with announcements. Uh, okay, yes, Ellen. She's got a clipboard, so be, be, be ready for that. Good morning. Um, it's been a custom in this church for as long as I've been coming here to have on Christmas Eve poinsettias uh, decorating the church. And so to do that, we ask that people sign up, hence the clipboard. <laughs> um, they cost $10 a piece. You can buy more than one, and then on Christmas Eve, you can take it back home with you. So if you want to contribute in that way and enjoy the poinsettia for the rest of the holiday season, please do that and do it by December 18th, so a couple weeks to make a decision if that's a hard decision. <laughs> and I'll put this out on the table. Please talk to me. I'm Ellen, and my uh, cell phone number is on here. Okay, thank you. Okay, other announcements? Yes, Lynn. Good morning. Um, I want to introduce everyone to a new friend that I made this morning. Her name is Lydia, and she is visiting us. Um, she's staying with a family here in town and asked to come and see a service at our church. And so she's here um, 
very nice, well-traveled young lady, and so please extend your welcome to her uh, during and after service. Thank you. And she goes to Thomas More College in uh, Merrimack. I had a nice chance to talk, to talk to her. So Lydia, nice to have you here. She's originally, she was born in China. So, okay, other people with announcements? Uh, Karen. So as Woody said, uh, Cookie Walk is actually on the 11th. It's in two weeks from today. Um, so here's signups. Um, you just have to bake four dozen cookies. Um, give us a list of the ingredients so we can organize nut-free table um, the day of, and um, for each uh, dozen you get uh, a ticket to a cake uh, raffle that we're going to have of a, a homemade cake either from um, Jack Yeo's or from um, another baker in town, um, and it'll be right after church on, on Sunday the 11th, so we'll post these outside, you can sign up, um, and, and we hope to have lots of leftover cookies afterwards that we can put into the Christmas baskets too. Oh, I like that. Okay. Barb, oh, I didn't mention those 85 kids, but you fill us in with the... Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we are helping 85 kids and teens this Christmas season, and um, I still have quite a few wish lists available, and I'm still missing a few from some of the families that we're hoping to get real soon because everything is due back December 11th so that we have time to sort through and put all the kids in, that belong in one family together to get them ready to be handed out with the food baskets on the 17th. I also have a few mental health adults uh, still available, so see me after church if you'd like to help. And of course, we take gift cards and cash and check donations as well, because I'll shop if I need to. I like to do it, so just <laughs> help us out, please. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that's Linda. Okay, Linda. Good morning. The trustees of expenditures would like to ask your help. We are looking for a person or persons to clear snow from our walkways this winter. We have a snow blower that is in perfect operating condition. We just had it serviced. But we do not have anyone to take care of our walkways. Obviously, this is a major concern for us because we need to keep the walkways clear so everyone coming here is safe. We had someone last year who did this, but he has now a full-time job and is not available to do it any longer. We have reached out to some commercial agencies, but quite honestly, the cost is extremely prohibitive for us. When you have to pay $500 to $700 per storm to plow and shovel, um, clearly, they don't want our business because we, we can't afford to do that. We're looking for any suggestions you have, and if you would like to get a hold of me, I'm Linda French, and, um, or let Woody know that you know of someone or any members of the Trustees of Expenditures. We would greatly appreciate your help. We do have someone who will plow our parking areas and our um, parking lot in the back of the church but we do not have anyone to shovel or use our snowblower. So we are really in desperate need here of finding one person, two people, whatever, a team of people. We're open to any and all suggestions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sam. Uh, we just wanted to let everybody know that Deb Kiner is um, going in for surgery on this coming Wednesday for a knee replacement. So just keep her in your thoughts and prayers, please. Anybody else can come up here and speak as long as they say cool before I speak. Okay, anyone else with an announcement? Any birthdays, anniversaries, more mitzvahs, anything like that? Yes. Yes, Judy, is that Judy? Yes. Cousin Nancy. Cousin Nancy, okay, Cousin Nancy, nice to see you. 
Okay, let's sing. begin the service with our morning prelude. We gather to worship the God who sent a little baby into our midst to change the world. And we begin as we sing our opening hymn, number 260. Unison reading uh, are the words that would normally probably be the scripture reading for this, the first Sunday of Advent. Um, <coughs> but because we're doing the um, the alphabet uh, and alphabet of faith, and this is K. Um, however, hope, which is expressed in this reading, will um, really uh, be an important part of the kingdom as we talk about it in the sermon. So let us read together the words of Isaiah on the announcement side of our bullet. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, 
you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel to the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and thou shalt be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. faith and the words uh, taken from the confession of 1967 um, and that again found on the announcement side of our bulletins. In Jesus Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Jesus Christ is God with humankind. He is the eternal son of the Father who became human and lived among us to fulfill the work of reconciliation. He is present in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit to continue and complete his mission. This work of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the foundation of all confessional statements about God, humanity, and the world. Therefore, the church calls all people to be reconciled to God and to one another.
as always, very, very nice. Now, the scripture reading is one that we usually read at Easter. But it's one of the most fascinating scenes in the Bible. Um, it's after Jesus has been arrested. And he um, is brought before the Roman governor, uh, Pontius Pilate. Begins with the 33rd verse of uh, chapter 18 of John. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? Very dramatic. Very dramatic scene in the New Testament. So, uh, time for the children's sermon. We're going to start lighting some candles down here at the Advent wreath. So, please try me. Don't be scared, I'm not going to light any of you on fire, it's bizarre. Come right up here, come, come right up here. Come look at our Advent wreath. Who knows what Advent is? You do? Countdown to, to, to something? Yes, what? Like a countdown to something? A countdown to something, yes. Remember when, that, well you don't remember when they went to the moon, but they had a countdown, right? Ten, nine, eight, it's like a countdown. Only it's not a countdown to going to the moon. What's it a countdown to? Um, there's like, uh, it's like a countdown from one day to another. One day to another until we get to uh, Christmas. 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 Which means, actually, the word Christmas comes from Mass of Christ. And a Mass is, is a service in a Roman Catholic church. Mass of Christ. It's the countdown to Christmas. Mm -hmm. And there are four Sundays till we get to Christmas. Actually, the fourth Sunday is Christmas Day. Uh, that's the one we have off because it's a religious holiday. But we're going, each one of these candles means something. And this first one that I'm going to light here is a candle of hope. And we light that if we're lucky. Takes a little breaking in there. So there we go. We light this with a hope that they had uh, many, many years before Jesus was born that there was going to be a special king that God would send. And this king arrived not in a palace. Where was Jesus born? Uh, like, a, like a barn kind of building? Like a barn, like a stable. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no room at the 7-Eleven or the Holiday Inn in Bethlehem. And they found a place to stay because they were there to pay their taxes in a stable. And we have great hope that Jesus will come again um, and create a much friendlier, more loving world for all the people on this globe. So that's our candle of hope. Okay, we'll see you after Sunday school. Thank you very much. Okay. And let us, uh, before we sing our hymn, let's take a moment to uh, say good morning to those around you.
And we're going to sing hymn number 766. continuously reading books. Um, I have chairs with them stacked next to the, those stacked next to the bed. I just read another um, really great book over the weekend. It's it, kind of an odd t uh, topic. It was a, a great book on the history of glue. But I found I couldn't put it down. It was just really gripping. Kind of a sticky topic, but you know. <laughs> okay, that's today's service. Uh, thanks. All right. <laughs> well, Isaiah's prophecy in today's reading that we read together expresses hope that there was going to come a new king and that things for the people of Israel and for the world would be better. Uh, other New Old Testament prophets as well as have hopes for a new king. And uh, uh, they talk about a Messiah. That was going to be the new king that was coming. Um, the Messiah would bring in a new kind of kingdom. Um, and a lowly Israel, the lowly nation of Israel, would be exalted uh, by that Messiah was much of the anticipation. And of course, Advent... It's a time when we prepare for the celebration of this king that uh, Israel was waiting for. But guess what? The baby born in Bethlehem was not like the king many were expecting. Um, he was not a David. He was a descendant of David. In fact, that was important to see that the, the baby born in Bethlehem uh, in fact, you can find his genealogy at the beginning of uh, one of the Gospels. Uh, but uh, it was not a David because he was uh, not a warrior. In fact, I think, you know, if you read the Sermon on the Mount, you have to conclude he was a pacifist. So he wasn't going to be leading an army against the Romans uh, or against anyone else. Um, but uh, he also was not a king that was going to sit on a throne but he was a common carpenter who spent his time uh, 
after he uh, kind of retired from being a carpenter, uh, teaching, healing, and helping others. And yet, he preached about a kingdom, the kingdom of God, which includes uh, the wonderful vision of Isaiah of a world of peace, you know, where nation uh, shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Um, uh, a kingdom where people would, uh, would be united in love and would look out for all of God's children uh, with a special concern for those who were poor and needy, and that all the quibbling and the hatred and the bad things of life uh, would be no more. The kingdom of God, that was Jesus' uh, vision. Um, so he was not the usual king. And there's probably no place this is better demonstrated than in this conversation between a man who was representing a king or an emperor, uh, Pontius Pilate. You know, I'm kind of preaching through this alphabet that I came up with, and K is for kingdom. Uh, nobody represents the kings uh, of the world or the emperors of the world probably any better in a discussion that I've ever read than Pontius Pilate. Now, he wasn't a king and he wasn't uh, an emperor, but he represented the emperor. He was sent as governor to the land of Israel because the Romans had conquered Israel and they wanted somebody in charge there to keep order and to make sure that uh, things didn't get out of hand and that they could get as much uh, money and uh, anything else worth anything out of Israel as possible. He was a typical king, if you will, or governor. Um, he wielded power over people's lives. And he did it um, to force them to obey the laws that he made out of fear. I mean, what could he do? Well, <laughs> that's why they brought Jesus to him. Uh, because he could put people to death. And I've mentioned this many times during Lent. Uh, you know, if you entered Jerusalem at the time that Jesus was alive, um, outside the walls of the city, uh, on either side of the road, you'd find crosses. Jesus was far from the only person ever crucified. It was a common practice by the Romans because it was a symbol when people walk by that, that you better obey the law or this could happen to you. So that's kind of, um, that's kind of the outlook of what uh, Pilate tried to do. Now, he was a kind of a traditional person of authority, representing, in this case, uh, the emperor. Jesus was entirely different, uh, entirely different. He had power. Uh, but his power wasn't the, um, wasn't the Roman army. His power wasn't the fear of crucifixion. His power was the power of love, God's love. Um, a, uh, his kingdom that he talked about uh, was going to be a much different kind of kingdom than the one that Pilate represented. Uh, it was going to be a kingdom, not of walls and of all kinds of laws, but a kingdom of the heart. It was going to be, and because people's hearts would be changed um, and God's power would come, God's power was the power of love. So that kingdom was going to be a place of love, a place of peace, a place where every person was important regardless of who they, their ancestors were, um, the color of their skin, um, their economic situation, or any of the things that normally separate people from one another. The important thing was they were all going to be in a kingdom together of love. Now, that was really a problem for Pilate. He, he didn't know what to make of this fellow. Now, Pilate... <clears throat> I think sometimes gets a bad rap. Now, not that he doesn't deserve some of it, because if you read the history of Pilate when he was governor in other places, he was equally brutal as he was in Jerusalem. 
you know, to keep order. His job was to keep order and to keep the revenues flowing to Rome. And he was a pretty brutal guy. But he did have, he was apparently of some intelligence. And he, he talked to Jesus and he says, well, what, uh, what kind of kingdom are you talking about? What kind of king are you? You know, you're, you're in my power. You know, I have your life in my hand. Jesus said, you have nothing in your hand. Pilate said, uh, thought, well, this guy seems like he's a little loony, uh, but not very dangerous. He's obviously not going to lead a violent revolution. Um, um, and Pilate's understanding of the kingdom, of a kingdom, was the Roman Empire, where might makes right, um, uh, where the king or the emperor or the emperor's representative, the governor, rules by force. Now, this is the beginning of Advent, and we have a lot of territory to cover because the world is not much different. I picked up the paper this morning. Headline, Ukraine remembers Stalin-era tactics as war ranges. Now, this war has been going on for quite a time, and I was very proud when we sent some petitions to Mr. Putin. He never sent me a thank you note or a call, but we sent it to him. But this is nothing new. Uh, in November 1932, uh, the leader of the then Soviet Union was a man named uh, Joseph Stalin. If you wanted a brutal guy, there, there was your guy. Um, in 1932 in November, according to this article, Soviet leader Stalin dispatched police to seize all grain and livestock from uh, newly collectivized Ukrainian farms, including the seed needed to plant the next crop. What was the result of that? Millions of Ukrainian peasants starved to death in the following months from what Yale uh, University historian Timothy Snyder calls clearly premeditated mass murder. Star people to death. Stalin might have killed, some people believe he killed more people than Hitler. He was a brutal guy. And now uh, uh, Russia has uh, targeted uh, critical infrastructure across the Ukraine in recent weeks through waves of airstrikes, again reading from this article by Dan Pelichuk of Reuters, uh, has targeted critical, critical infrastructure across the Ukraine in recent weeks through waves of airstrikes that have sparked widespread power outages and killed civilians. Millions of Ukrainians um, were still without power after fresh strikes this week. Uh, President Zelensky said late on Friday. The winter is already difficult, and if everything continues the same way, then it will be very similar to what we read in history books, uh, says a man named Artin Antoneko, a 23-year-old marketing specialist. Pope Francis this week compared Russia's war in the Ukraine to what he called the terrible genocide of the Stalin era and said the Ukrainians were now suffering from the martyrdom of aggression. And then you just turn the section of the paper over, and down the bottom, here's another article. Kim Jong-un, remember him? He's the, I think uh, he's kind of the sh short leader. It doesn't make him good or bad because he's short, but he's kind of the short fellow that's in charge in North Korea. Um, uh, he says, headline reads, Kim Jong-un says the goal is for the world's strongest nuclear force. That country in which people are desperately poor is spending all their money developing nuclear weapons so they can become the strongest nuclear force in the country. I think it's time for President Biden to call former President Trump and get the phone number for Dennis Rodman, who gets along with this fellow, send them over there and see if they can play a little basketball and calm them down. What does, uh, what does the Old Testament say? And I guess it's Ecclesiastes. There is nothing new 
under the sun. And that's certainly true of our understanding of kings or people in charge. And yet for Jesus, in this discussion with Pontius Pilate, power is not the power of Caesar's military. It is the power of God's love, a power which Jesus used to heal people both physically and spiritually and to bring people together. And it's a power that calls us today during Advent. It's a power which can change lives and can change the world in which um, we live uh, by harnessing the power of love and using it for good. And good is what's, uh, which is for God. Um, we live in a time when Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God seems a long way off. And yet it was the central message of his preaching. And the candle of hope that we lit this morning on our Advent wreath reminds us that with God's help, it is possible to do what little we can in our wonderful little town here uh, to move our world closer to the kingdom that Jesus came to proclaim. It's a kingdom uh, that would be make a world without war. It would make a world without mass shootings. It would make a world without hunger. It would make a world without hatred, a world without racism, a world of peace and unity and justice and love. That is the hope of Jesus, and that is the hope of the candle we lit this morning, the hope of the coming of the kingdom that Jesus dreamed of and began with his life, his death, and his resurrection. And until he comes back in the flesh, he depends on all of us to do what we can to make a kingdom that is a more Christ-like place. And let us bow together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you, you are incredibly patient with us as human beings and patient with us as those who try to follow Jesus because sometimes it just seems we never can get it right. Just as individuals, and certainly we get, do not get it right as part of bigger entities like nations, the rule of the world seems to be that might makes right. And yet we know that your rule is that we are to love one another. With a special love for those who are on the peripheries and the most difficult places of society. Please God help us. Help us to be the people that you want us to be. With those we love and to those we don't know. Help us to be more loving. Help us to be more inclusive. Help us to come together, not just with family and friends, but with people throughout the world to work at creating the kingdom that Jesus came to bring. Help us to become more loving in this season of love, but in each and every day of our lives. We thank you for your forgiveness, which we will continue to need because we know that we are not always loving and as hard as we try, we will never completely succeed. But because you love us and forgive us, help us to love and forgive others and make a world that indeed is the kingdom that Jesus came to begin. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus with a special remembrance of those who are sick, with those who are suffering, with those who have lost loved ones, with all those with special needs. We pray Jesus' prayer, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Worship as we share our morning gifts. upon these our gifts and upon us. May we be your servants. We ask for your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Now closing hymns number 245. <clears throat>
Now, my Lord, bless us and keep us. May his face to shine upon us. Be gracious unto us and grant us peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 